This week in our moments together, we're going to tackle the subject of loneliness. Loneliness is a dangerous and pervasive feeling, emotion, problem in our society today. Did you know that as many as 25% of adults now live alone? Those of us who have partners know that all of this is hard when you go through it with someone. Can you imagine going through it alone? Loneliness is a health risk, a physical health risk, equal in intensity to many of the factors that we take for granted. It's as dangerous, if not more so, than smoking 15 cigarettes a day, than obesity, than physical activity or breathing in air pollution. Yeah, loneliness is very dangerous. It increases the risk of death. So when the president talks about um, opening up the country, lest other things, dangerous things, become worse than the virus itself, he's on pretty solid um, scientific footing. Did you know that those under 50 years old report higher degrees of loneliness than those over 50? When I think of loneliness, I often think of our elderly. I think of people in old folks' homes or those who live alone. But actually, the younger generations and the highest levels of loneliness are reported by Generation Z. Those are our kids. Our kids are preteens. Our children are lonely. All these devices, all these bells and whistles, you know what we really need is each other. And in our society, we're withdrawing from those things that are most helpful. And we're retreating into those things that are most harmful. Isn't that crazy? Less than 50% of American adults now participate in any religious, organized religious activity. Less than 50%. Less than 25% belong to any kind of a club or a sport. Which, by the way, leads me to a caution I want to put out there. Just because you're living with someone doesn't mean that you're not lonely. You can even have a very good relationship with your spouse and still suffer from loneliness. Well, how does that work? No one person can ever fully fill the cup of another. Now, you and I as believers, we know that every one of our cups has to start with God. Without that vital relationship, good luck trying to fill it with anything else. But even with the Lord as our foundation, and that's what we're going to talk about in just a minute, how important that is. Other social interaction is necessary. Find others who understand you. Find others you can connect with. You won't connect with everybody. No one will connect with everybody. Some are better than others at connecting at a wider swath of people, swath of people. But nobody connects with everybody just because there are other people around. You know, 
loneliness is a feeling, it's an emotion, and so it's all over the map. You can have somebody living alone and not feeling lonely at all. And you can have somebody in a crowd feeling all alone. No one solution fits for everybody. But in this opening monologue on loneliness, I just want you to know that if you feel alone, you're not alone in feeling alone. This is a serious issue. Don't beat yourself up. Don't be ashamed. Reach out. Keep reaching out until you you scratch that. You ever get that itch in the middle of your back? And I mean, it's a real, and you try, and you, uh, and, and, and maybe even yet, yeah, you can say, you know, get the, oh no no not that down a little bit up a little over to the right oh you, uh, you get yourself a stick and you keep going at it until ah oh that's it there's an ah waiting for you persist uh, join us on Wednesday night even just to listen to other people even just to see their faces. I'm amazed at, how, at what a lift that gives me. I, I called Ray Mummert the other day just to uh, get his help on the Wednesday night thing. And, and it felt like I hadn't talked to Ray in a long, long time. And it was good to talk to him. Give somebody a call, especially if you're fearing they're a bit lonely right now. Reaching out is one of the best ways to reach inside of ourselves and scratch those itches. But take it seriously. Be intentional. One of the things I've gone through in officing at home is changing my schedule completely. I, I could bore you with the details of what my Mondays were like, what my Tuesdays were like, what my Wednesdays were like. I had it all mapped out. And as I've said many times, I love a good rut. I love a routine. I know what to expect. I have control, at least some control over my schedule. But now that things are completely different, I have had to reorder. What do I want to get done on a Monday? What, what is Tuesday like? And I find myself overreaching, overpushing. In fact, a couple Wednesdays ago, I was coming into the Zoom meeting. I, I was coming in later than I wanted to, and I was coming in off the heels of having done a, a study, a Bible study, gotten it together. And I didn't allow myself enough margin in between. And so when I got on, um, I found that there were already people waiting there. There were things being shown that I didn't want on the screen. Somebody had shared the screen, and I know they didn't intend to have those things up, but there they were. I was behind the eight ball trying to catch up. I'm talking to myself here. We need more margin in our lives. We need to give ourselves a, a little bit more grace. And... We often make fun of people standing around the cooler, the water cooler at work, just chatting away the day and so on. Maybe those kinds of things are more vital to our productivity than we expected, than we imagined. We thought they were negatives and maybe building the morale, the camaraderie, the community fighting that disease of loneliness. It's important. So in this week, let's be intentional about not being lonely, not being ashamed of being lonely, not taking it as a personal affront if our partner shares with us or with somebody else that they're feeling lonely. It's okay. You are a great part of them feeling whole and alive, but you're not everything. Nobody is. Encourage them to reach out to others 
and uh, pray for them, help them. But for all of us today, the Lord says, Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and his, and his way is gentle. We need that every single day. Yeah, you met with God yesterday. It was pretty good today. A lot of times we start over in our cosmic loneliness, that hole that needs God. We talk about people who are unsaved and they got a hole inside. Even those of us who are saved, if we don't give attention to that relationship with God, the hole develops again. It starts to grow. And so you spending time in these moments every day, God bless you, that's a great thing to do. Get into the Word, into your Bible. Uh, watch other good affirming things. But today, say, Lord, I know that you really ultimately are all I need. Now, when I say that, I'm saying that he will provide through himself the most important kind of connection, us and him, and he will provide for us connections with other people, connections that are good for us. There will always be connections that discourage us, that are harmful to us, but there are healing connections too. <laughs> Seek the Lord. Let him lead you to those good connections. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you care, that you will never leave us, you will never forsake us. That you love us so much you went to the cross for us. There is this cosmic, this divine love. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you for loving us. And we love you. And forgive us, Lord, for often looking for what only you can give in other people, in other relationships. That doesn't work. But we begin with you today. And we thank you for the gift of other people. I, I've often mused over the fact that there was you and Adam in the garden and you gave him Eve and you said to him, you love her. You weren't jealous over that relationship. You, you gave it, you nurtured it. As long as we're centered on you first, all our other relationships will be healthy. Help us, Lord God, to breathe health into others and love into others and care over them and try to meet their needs for companionship and help us to be wise in our own search too. And we'll thank you for your help this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless. Hope to see you again soon.